Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to correct the statistics used by John Krakauer in his book, Into Thin Air. It is not his fault that what he reported was inaccurate, so this isn't going to be about blaming anyone. It's just going to outline why his numbers were incorrect and what the correct numbers are. In the book, Into Thin Air, Krakauer wrote, In fact, the murderer's outcome of 1996 was in many ways simply business as usual. Although a record number of people died in the spring climbing season on Everest, the 12 fatalities amounted to only 3% of the 398 climbers who ascended higher than base camp, which is actually slightly below the historical fatality rate of 3.3%. Now, as you read that, it should stick out as being a little odd. Even Wikipedia, which dutifully reports that analysis as being correct, editorializes that it is statistically curious. And the reason it is statistically curious is that it is just plain wrong. In 1996 and early 97, when Krakauer was putting all this together, the Himalayan database as we know it today did not exist. The database was being maintained by Elizabeth Hawley and consisted of her numerous notes of interviews with various expedition members and notes about climbing permits. A single Nepali data entry clerk had been working for three years entering the data, and by 1996, the database was starting to take shape but it would take almost eight more years and a total of 11,000 hours of work to get the database into the form we use today. During that period, computer programmer Richard Salisbury worked on getting the data into a workable database, and in 2003, he and co-author Raymond Huey published an analysis of the data in the American Alpine Journal. Shortly after that, copies of the database were sold to the public, and every year an updated version is released documenting the summit's deaths and other key statistics. Today, the entire database is available for free online. So when John Krakauer got the data from Elizabeth Hawley back in 1996 or early 97, it was the best that was available, but the data set would not be ready for proper analysis for another seven years. Not surprisingly, the analysis it provided was completely wrong. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Today, with more than 20 years of the Himalayan database organization cleaning up the data, we can perform a proper analysis. I have put together a more detailed analysis in a Jupyter notebook, and I'll link to that in the description. So let's look at what the accurate data says about the 1996 climbing season. Death rate for 1996 was 4.1%, compared to a historical average of just 2.7%. Using the correct data, 1996 stands out as an extremely deadly year, one of the most deadly in history of the mountain up to that time. It was the deadliest year since 1984, and any of the more deadly years had avalanches that significantly contributed to the death toll. In fact, if you subtract out avalanche deaths and ignore years in which less than 10 people were climbing the mountain, on a percentage of deaths to people exposed to risk, that is people climbing above base camp, 1996 was the third deadliest year on record at that time. Even separating the analysis between Western climbers and Sherpa, as the 2003 article in American Alpine Journal did, you get a historical average of 1.7% death rate compared to the average for spring of 1996 being 4.4%. No matter how you look at it, 1996 was a deadly year. It does not matter if you think the deaths were caused by the storm, by Rob Hall's mistakes, or whether it was Sandy Pittman on the balcony with an ice axe. No matter what, 1996 was by no means business as usual. But now, with the accurate data, at least we can all agree that statistically, 1996 was a much deadlier year than the historical average, and no doubt John Krakauer will issue an update correcting this any day now.